Good morning and a very warm welcome to Christ Church Cathedral, whether you're here in person or at home watching on video. It's good to see you on this seventh Sunday after Pentecost Day. Our children are all gathered in the chapter house for vacation Bible school, so you won't see them this morning. If there's any left out there, please head to the chapter house today. But they're going to have a great time, and they will join us for hospitality and refreshments. Please all of you come and join uh, us after service today for that. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 
Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord, mercifully receive the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may know and understand what things they ought to do and also may have grace and power faithfully to accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. These are the descendants of Isaac, Abraham's son, Abraham was the father of Isaac, and Isaac was 40 years old when he married Rebekah, daughter of Bethuel, the Aramedian of Padam Aram, sister of Laban, the Armenian. Isaac prayed to the Lord for his wife because she was barren, and the Lord granted his prayer, and his wife, Rebekah, conceived. The children struggled together within her, and she said, if this is the way, if this is to be the way, why do I live? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples born of you shall be divided. The one shall be stronger than the other. The elder shall serve the younger. When her time to give birth was at hand, there were twins in her womb. The first came out red, all his body like a hairy mantle, so they named him Esau. Afterward, his brother came out with his hand gripping Esau's heel, so he was named Jacob. Isaac was 60 years old when she bore them. When the boys grew up, Esau was a skillful hunter, a man of the field, while Jacob was a quiet man living in tents. Isaac loved Esau because he was fond of game, but Rebekah loved Jacob. Once when Jacob was cooking, cooking a stew, Esau came in from the field and he was famished. Esau said to Jacob, let me eat some of that red stuff for I am famished. Therefore he called Edom. Jacob said, first sell me your birthright. Esau said, I am about to die. Of what use is a birthright to me? 
Jacob said, swear to me first. So he swore to him and sold his birthright to Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau bread and lentil stew, and he ate and drank and rose and went his way. Thus Esau despised his birthright. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalm appointed for today is Psalm 119, verses 105 through 112. Please join me in reciting responsively by whole verse. Your word is a lantern to my feet and a light upon my path. I have sworn and am determined to keep your righteous judgments. I am deeply troubled. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your word. Accept, O Lord, the willing tribute of my lips, and teach me your judgments. My life is always in my hand, yet I do not forget your law. The wicked have set a trap for me, but I have not strayed from your commandments. Your decrees are my inheritance forever. Truly, they are the joy of my heart. I have applied my heart to fulfill your statutes forever and to the end. The second reading is from the first letter of Paul to the Romans. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, for the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, Jesus has set you free from the law of sin and of death. For God has done what the law, weakened by the flesh, could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and to deal with sin. He condemned sin in the flesh so that the just requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on things of the flesh, but those who live according to the spirit set their minds on things of the spirit. To set the mind on the flesh is death, but to set the mind on spirit is life and peace. For this reason, the mind that is set on flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law. Indeed, it cannot. And those who are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the but you are not in the flesh, you are in the spirit. Since the spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, though the body is dead because of sin, the spirit is life because of righteousness. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to your mortal bodies and through his spirit that dwells in you. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be God. to God.
the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Jesus went out and sat by the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear when the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Wilt and Harris, if you two want to go escape to VBS, you can. It's okay. Go have some fun. <laughs> and now may the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, this week, we find ourselves at the beginning of that old summer series of sermons based on three of Jesus' most popular parables. That's right, for the next three Sundays, before our dean returns from sabbatical, I'll be preaching to you about three of those rather strange stories Jesus shared so often with those who knew him well and especially with those who didn't know him so well. So let's dig in, shall we? Today, Jesus is most certainly speaking to those whom he didn't know so well. In fact, he is speaking to so many that he has to go out in a boat in what, as I recall learning, was a natural sort of amphitheater in order to project his voice and enable him to share with many more people than he might have otherwise. I love the image of Jesus on the beach, and today, on this 
hot summer Sunday, we have the image of the Savior on a beach with crowds of beachgoers who are listening to every word. There's something different about this guy, something that draws people to sit up from their normal activities and pay attention to his every word. Jesus delivers too, doesn't he? In an era that was driven by agriculture, the need to have enough food to survive, we get a parable. Again, the first of a group of three in Matthew's Gospel. This agricultural parable is about planting seeds in three different types of growing medium, that's horticulture speak, for three different kinds of dirt. But before we analyze this any further, we better try to figure out why Jesus is speaking about agricultural things instead of just speaking plainly, stating the theological points he is trying to share in his earthly ministry. Now, a parable is a means to show, by analogy, some truth that may be quite difficult to understand. A parable makes a holy mystery, like Jesus' divinity, not necessarily understandable, but comprehensible for what it meant then and for what it means today. If, for instance, Jesus just started talking about sin, what happens to people who don't quite get his message, who keep on sinning? Well, most of those listeners on the beach and gathered here would probably leave and head home for dinner. Instead, Jesus gives them a perplexing story that must have led to many an interesting conversation around many a dinner table. There's something different about this guy. Jesus' analogies run pretty deep in today's parable. I think for me, they speak really directly to the work and ministry Dean Beverly called me here to do provide Christian education and formation for our children, and sometimes for you adults, too. If we try to plant the seeds of faith to provide Christian education, let's say we just do it in a poor manner, the faith of those children we educate will wither away and die in a few years, not the result we're hoping for. Similarly, if we try to teach them in an environment that prevents them from hardly ever getting to Sunday school, an environment that has a lot of competition for their time, be that sports, camps, travel, etc., the young faith being nurtured right now in our BBS upstairs could just wither away and die in a few years. On the other hand, if we can continue to effectively nurture the faith of our youngest members, to, as the National Association of Episcopal Schools often likes to say, we would be planting seeds for the future. I hope and I pray that that is what I'm helping you to do here at Christ Church Cathedral as well. Sometimes, though, I wonder what else we could do here at the cathedral? What could we do to further nurture the faith of our youngest members? I wonder what programs and personnel God may be calling us to in order to meet the needs of today's busy, overbooked children and youth. I wonder where else we could plant some seeds. Well, last week, I heard a famous preacher from our own time and place, a very famous preacher, not on a beach, not even in person, but instead on my tiny iPhone screen. This preacher always makes me wonder if his style might have been like Jesus' preaching style. This preacher offers the the word in a compelling manner with stories and thoughts that entertain and have deeper meanings upon further listening. This preacher is our presiding bishop, Michael Curry. Now back at seminary in homiletics class, preaching class, we watch this young, dynamic, small-statured black man preach on videos. He hadn't been elected bishop of West Tennessee, And I don't think one of us ever thought this fiery African-American could be elected presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church. But then we never thought a woman would be elected presiding bishop 
before our seminary days ended in the spring of 2007. Now, some 20 years later, our denomination has broken ground with the first female presiding bishop and the first African-American person of color presiding bishop. Soon, we will be electing Michael Curry's replacement. His nine-year term is almost over. You may recall our bishop, Russell Kendrick. He was planning a huge revival featuring Bishop Curry back in the pre-pandemic days. I'll never forget hearing him say something like, after the royal wedding of Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, Michael Curry will be the hottest ticket anywhere. And he's our diocesan 50th anniversary speaker. He had enthusiasm, didn't he? Well, Bishop Russell went on to rent the Pensacola Bay Center until the worldwide pandemic shut everything down, including gatherings like that. But it didn't dim the voice of our presiding bishop nor has a very recent, very serious health scare changed his dedication, his calling to share God's love in the world through the perfect example of that love, Jesus the Christ. Just an aside, please pray for Bishop Curry as he continues on a much reduced schedule and faces more tests in the coming weeks. But in the PBs, uh, PB is short for presiding bishop's sermon last week at a gathering in Baltimore, the PB said these words. Uh, we hear him, first of all, though, joking about the wedding a bit, the royal wedding. He joked, it was just a small family affair with a few people gathered. Uh, no, he didn't share any bits of his interaction with the royals, because he was right there with Harry and Meghan and all of them. Instead, he tells us what happened for months after the wedding. And this proves his status as the, one of the world's best preachers. He wore his purple shirt, got on the airplane on his way home, and interacted with folks as usual. And they all said, you preached about love. That was so interesting, they said. I never knew Christianity was about love. Well, let me just repeat that. It just kind of blows my mind. Many people, for months, no exaggeration, according to the PB, told him they never knew Christianity was about love. That's the message, the good news of Jesus sinking in. And isn't it a shame our bishop's plan for the Bay Center didn't come through? I often daydream about what that event might have been like for our diocese, for Pensacola, for the church, for all of humanity. Now, don't get me wrong. There was a Zoom version of his speech, actually a sort of televised discussion with Alabama author Brian Stevenson but it wasn't quite the same. And it was a bit like preaching to the choir. I'm sure many, many of you were tuned in with me that evening. Anyhow, what I carried away from Bishop Curry's sermon last week was this. He said these words. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. Let me repeat. When the power of love overcomes the love of power, the world will know peace. The good news of God's love over power is really in our hands, isn't it? Jesus is no longer here. Bishop Curry is about to retire. Your clergy can only do so much to share the good news. It's really up to all of us. All of us gathered here in person and at home collectively to love one another as Jesus loved us. That will change the world. If we can manage to change our lives around, to help those less fortunate, to pursue justice and liberty for all, planting seeds for a new generations, we right here in Mobile, Alabama, can change the love of power into the power of love the world will become a different place for those little seeds we are planting upstairs in BBS, even as I preach. 
Now, I think it's interesting that of the five hymns we will sing this morning, and thank you, Elizabeth, where are you? There you are. Um, they are some of my very favorite hymns. But anyways, out of those five hymns that we will be singing there today, uh, all four out of those five mention love or have a theme of love. Our first song during communion today is one hymn that never fails to stop me short. It catches me in moments of unbelief in the love of Christ, sometimes almost brings a tear to my eyes. So I'll close with those words. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this? that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul, to lay aside his crown for my soul. Amen. Standing as you are able, let us join together in affirming the faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Gracious God, you sow your gifts abundantly upon the church and upon the world inviting all to live deeply and to produce abundant blessings for your creation. Hear our intercessions on behalf of all who need your nurturing love as we pray. Your word is a lantern to our feet and a light upon our path. There is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Spread your grace generously within your church, O God, that she may be rooted deeply in your love and walk according to your spirit. Today we pray especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Russell, our bishop, Beverly and Eric, our priests, and for all bishops, priests, and deacons. We also pray for Dean Gibson in her sabbatical time this summer. In the Anglican cycle of prayer, we pray for the Anglican Church in Canada. In the Cathedral Cycle of Prayer, we pray for St. James Episcopal Church in Port St. Joe. In the Ecumenical Cycle of Prayer, we pray for the Church in Erythritria, Ethiopia, and Miracle Temple of the Living in Mobile. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light unto our path. Bring light and understanding to our leaders and to all in authority, that they may Resist the things of the flesh and set their minds in your spirit, which is life and peace. We pray today for Joe, our president, Kay, our governor, Sandy, our mayor, and for those serving in the military, especially Marlon Brockowitz, Ryan Hurt, Hunter Ladd, Blake Hickey, 
Grace Stevens, Carter Gannon, Dylan Butler, Laura C. Williams, and Trip Bennett. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light upon our path. Bless with your divine fecundity all who wish to have and to nurture children, and bring your gift of peace and reconciliation to all families in conflict. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light upon our path. Protect all who are threatened by poverty, hunger, violence, illness, famine, or disaster, that they might be relieved from their anxiety and restored to their birthright as your children. Today we pray for the Federal Correctional Institution and Camp in Mariana. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light upon our path. Our community is troubled with the cares of the world and choked with the lure of wealth. Free us with your spirit of life and peace that we may bear fruit with abundance. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light upon our path. We offer to your extravagant love those people and concerns that fill our hearts. We pray especially for Patty Beal, Megan Drain, Beth Schramm, Gay Formanek, Susan Krausen, Liz Inge Lott, Kathy Kelly, Valerie Vanek, Laura Shearer, Jane Whitespunner, Harriet Jean Bowden, Lynn Betbys Yankee, Blair and Kirk Matei, Patsy Seymour, Nancy Bryan, Ricky Bradford, Chester Zubler, Lisa Williams, Sean Thomas, Bob Peter, Bobby Prince, the Reverend Bob Graves, the Reverend Dennis Brown, Sugar Torbert Immel, and all others on the cathedral prayer list. We give your thanks for the blessings of this life. We know that he who raised Christ from the dead will give life to our mortal bodies through the spirit that dwells in us. We pray for those who have died. Today we pray for the repose of the soul of Robin Minto. The flowers on the altar are given to the glory of God and in loving memory of Shelley Carr Nightingale. Your word is a lantern to our feet. And a light upon our path. Compassionate God, you have planted your spirit within all creation. Nurture and bring to fruition your graceful intention to accomplish that which you purpose and succeed in the things for which you have sent your word. That life and peace may grow into the abundance that fills the world with your joy. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord, Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. Also with you. Please exchange a sign of God's peace. Peace be with you, Douglas. Peace the Lord, Molly. Peace the Lord. Scott. Welcome back. Did go good. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's doing announcements today, but I'm happy to just highlight a couple of the ones that I see in our bulletin today. And uh, one of those is certainly about uh, growing the next generation, and that is Operation Backpack. We've already got a few staples purchased over in the library, and we can always use more. I'm sure Carolyn will be getting on to us about that uh, when she gets back from a, a wonderful, well-deserved trip to France this week. 
Uh, I would also draw your attention to, um, uh, to the Acolyte Festival. That's something that I'm working on, and that is going to be August 19th. We need volunteers from the cathedral to be uh, greeters and uh, other service roles. There are sign-up sheets on the ministry table in the chapter house. Um, please avail yourselves of that opportunity to serve this generation and the next. And now walk in love as Christ loved us and offered himself as sacrifice pure and holy.
Our service of Holy Eucharist continues with the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. For by water and the Holy Spirit you have made us a new people in Jesus Christ our Lord, to show forth your glory in all the world. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. Jesus stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself, in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Amen.